ఓం శ్రీ సాయిరామ్ విత్ అట్మోస్ట్ హ్యూమిలిటీ అండ్ లవ్ ఐ ఆఫర్ మై సెల్ఫ్ అట్ ది లోటస్ స్వీట్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ మోస్ట్ బిలబెట్ స్వామి అండ్ ఐఎమ్ ఎక్స్ట్రీమ్లీ గ్రేట్ఫుల్ టు హిమ్ ఫర్ హ్యావింగ్ గివెన్ మీ దిస్ ఆపర్చునిటీ టు షేర్ హిస్ గ్లోరీ విత్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ మై లవింగ్ సాయిరామ్స్ టు ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ హియర్ the rather thin crowd probably is due to not a so friendly budget and then the pounding that the indian bowlers are getting at the hands of the friendly neighborhood batsmen nevertheless a sai satsang is a great experience it's a great moment it's a great blessing we are coming to the close of the shri khara nama samvatsara and very soon we'll be getting into the nandana nama samatsara the last one year has been quite painful for most of us these were trying and turbulent times this was a time when the one who is much dear to each one of us than ourselves chose to leave the mortal coil in the midst of all this that happened in the last one year there was i think one silver lining and that silver lining is this event called samarpan which was taken up as an initiative by the students samarpan as it means is an offering an offering of our moments spent with the lord I feel extremely humbled and privileged to be standing here in front of all of you especially when brother Vijay Sai who is not here I think today he called me last week and said will you talk on the 18th and the first thought which struck me was why me looking at the speaker list that spoke from this hallowed land over the last 10 months i am but a small fry nevertheless this is truly a blessing of the lord i remember the last time i spoke in this hall was on the 27th of may 2006 and that was right here when swami was seated on his throne and i clearly remember just before i started the talk i went to swami and said can i intersperse in between in kannada also is that okay is that fine i said swami enadre tappadre kshamispidi maatadvaga enadre tappadre kshamispidi please forgive me if there is a mistake that i make during my talk and swami instantly said yenu tappagodilla nan maatadtini and then the talk started and it went on and and at the end of it when i again went back to thank swami he said yen sir yar maatadidru nana neena and during the talk i had to mention a particular incident where i said after my parents left me in this large beautiful wonderful yet harsh world swami stepped in and took control of my life and i was narrating a number of incidents and when swami was retiring back behind when he was getting into the chair in into the car the chair was getting into the car he had tears in his eyes and he said why do you say there is no one for you when i am there for you i have told this to you so many times that i am there for you why do you always feel there is no one for you yen tande tai illa andre yen aitu nan ilva this this these words which came from him on that day on the evening of that 27th of may 2006 was not the first time it happened this is something which he has been reminding me time and again time and again and time and again 
And I am probably just a figurehead in this whole conversation. I think this assurance is something which goes out to the whole world that I am there for all of you. Taking a cue from this sentence, I am there for you, which is the topic that has been given to me today, I would like to take you all back in this beautiful divine saga, this divine romance that has been shared with the Lord of our times. We need to go back in time to, I think, 1980, 81, when I was in the sixth or seventh standard, and that was my first real physical encounter in this life with Swami. I used to enjoy playing cricket, anything to skip a class and go away to play cricket. And my mother was trying her best to ensure that I study. She was ardently devoted to Bhagwan. There was a very unique blessing that she had wherever she would be. I know this for a fact. Swami would come and talk to her. Something he would do with her every single darshan. She could be in the 10th row, she could be in the 20th row, she could be standing far away. He will somehow spot her and go to her. And she was crazily devoted to him. She was the only person from the family who used to go again and again to have his darshan, sometimes even tell a lie at home. I am going out. And the fact was she would have gone and quickly had a darshan of Bhagwan and come back. And one fine morning she tells me, today I will take you to see God. And she also promised and said, you then don't need to attend school in the afternoon. You can come away after lunch. The, to be honest to all of you, the, the assurance of being able to see God was not as attractive as the chance to skip school for that half a day. So, promptly I returned back from school and that afternoon we went to this devotee's house who was I think a member of the Central Trust at that time, Mr. K.R. Prasad. My parents had been invited to his home. Bhagwan was visiting their house that day. It was in Palace Orchards, if I remember. <clears throat> And we reached a little late. So we were not able to get in. And just as we reached, Bhagwan had finished his darshan and his, uh, the bhajans in the, ho in the house. And he was, I think, ready to accept arati. So we were asked to stand right at the entrance door. The moment arati got over, Swami came out. And I got to know that we had come to see Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba because there is a small background to this. My grandmother, my mother's mother, had warned me that if your mother ever takes you to see Sai Baba, don't go and look into his eyes. He will mesmerize you and he will hypnotize you. Don't ever look into his eyes. And she had literally scared me on this. Imagine, later on times came where to get a glimpse of that beautiful drishti, we would go any distance. And so when I reached there and I realized that it was Swami that we had come to see, the immediate thought that went to my mind was, I should not look into his eyes. In fact, I should do everything possible to ensure that I don't have a direct encounter with him. So I went and hid behind my mother. And Swami, the moment he spotted my mother, he came straight to her. In Samacharama, started off. And then she immediately pulled me to the front. And she started off, you know, Ododela, he doesn't study at all. He's always playing cricket, this, that, went on and on and on. And Swami, in a whiff, he materialized a lot of vibhuti. He put it on my head and he rubbed it. And he said, you don't worry about him, I will take care of him. This was an assurance he gave my mother. He's lived up to his word. I can, I can vouch for it. I probably didn't realize the huge, the massive significance of what he had done. 
It was an encounter with divinity. It was a moment where the Lord chose to touch his creation. It was a moment which was defining in my life, but I didn't realize it then. I actually shrugged off. Even as he was rubbing the vibhuti, I remember I shrugged off. I came back home. I had a fight with my mother. I said, why did you have to take me there? My grandmother kept saying, don't go to see Sai Baba, and you never told me the truth. And it went on and on and on. The next few years in my life went on the lap of all the love and care that an earthly mother gives her child. Time went by, time was well spent. I remember I completing my 10th standard and then the graduation, finished my college, and then tragedy struck when suddenly, out of the blue, my mother passed away. I just finished my graduation and she passed away. And after she passed away, there was a lot of sadness within. At the same time, there was a lot of anger. The anger was actually directed at our loving Lord. I always felt when she was so devoted to you, when she was so attached to you, why did you have to take her away so soon? And this feeling kept increasing within me. When one day my sister, she said, let us go to see Sai Baba, he has come to Whitefield, let's have his darshan. She would frequent the Shirdi Sai Baba temple, which is in Cambridge layout, on the eastern side of Bangalore. There were, uh, there was a devotee lady there, who I think is the sister of our warden. The lady wanted to come to have darshan of Bhagwan here, and my sister promised her that we will take you, and she told me, you can come, and the incentive she gave me was, you can drive the car, because I had just got a driving license. So that incentive really worked. I said, okay, I get a chance to drive the car, so let me use this opportunity and go. So I brought them all to Vrindavan, and the Sai Ram shed was there. This hall was not there. We had parked the car outside, and these three ladies got down from the car and walked in for darshan. I chose to be seated in the car because I said, I will not go in to have his darshan. He took away my mother from me, I will not go. So I continued to sit in the car. And then suddenly I looked back and found there was a purse or some bag which was left behind. I thought one of the ladies must have left it and probably they need it inside. So I took that bag and came into the ashram to hand it over to the lady. And the moment I came in, a sevadal ushered me and said, come on, come on, come on, Sairam, Sairam, you cannot go and sit on the lady's side and you can't go that side, you sit down. So he took me and made me sit. And that happened to me at the far end where the sand was at that time. Uh, the shed was on that corner and Swami would come walking from here. This was all open area. And towards the end of where the last lines ended, he made me sit there under the sun. And we were waiting for Bhagwan to come out. And from within, there was anger. There were mixed feelings. I said, why did you have to take my mother away? Why? Anyway, now you are coming out, I will have it out with you. And Swami so beautifully and gracefully glided himself towards the Sairam shed. And as he came very close to me, I suddenly got up, went on my knees, and I said, my mother died. And Swami instantly said, but I am there for you. And the, 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 the timing of his saying that was as if he expected that statement from me. The moment I said, my mother died, he said, but I am there for you. It happened as if it was all pre-planned. And he goes across, there was a lady sitting with some rose petals, flowers to be offered. He takes a handful of that, he comes and puts it on me. And then he walks away as if nothing happened. He went, sat for his bhajan, and he returned back. This, brothers and sisters, was the big change. I don't know what has happened to me after that particular conversation, after that particular incident with Bhagwan. Life changed instantly from that very moment. 
I fell, so to speak, crazily in love with him. I became mad about him. I got obsessed. For me, the whole life, the world was just Swami, Swami and Swami alone. There was nothing else at all. Everything changed after that one single incident. It was only him. After that darshan, a few incidents happened through which he established himself in my life. I remember soon after this, I got introduced to a samiti which is in Indranagar. This is called Sai Darshan. And uh, I was told that Swami would visit this place every year whenever he came to Vrindavan. And that year, Swami was supposed to visit us in the month of June. I was given the job of taking care of the ga garden and ensuring the flower pots are kept right outside Bhagwan's room on the first floor. Swami came and then he went upstairs. He was inside his room. And at that time, one of the ladies said, the flower pot needs to be kept outside. Why have you not done it? So they said, since Swami is inside the room, you can now go and keep it outside. So I carried the pot and went up. And just when I was about to keep it right there, the door opens. And guess who comes out? The Lord himself. He comes out. He looks at me and says, hey, what is your name? So I went and told him my name. And then immediately he took his hand and three times he hit on the back. Three times. And this was another incident which created a big change. It was like three clear assurances. I'm there. I am there. I am there. It ended with that. I went down. Swami visit, finished his visit in the mandir. He carried on. The next few days, I kept coming for darshan here. Beautiful days. This hall, incidentally, has given humanity a chance to feast on that form. It gave us all an opportunity to touch that form. It gave us an opportunity to talk to that form. His drishti, his darshan, sparshan, and sambhashan happened in this very place. Those were beautiful days. I spent my time coming here, enjoying his darshan, and going back. And one fine day, he chose to again surprise me with a beautiful presence, a beautiful incident, where he again took the level of his involvement in my life to the next, next stage. I used to go to a friend of mine near C.V. Raman Nagar to learn mathematics. Being a commerce and accounting guy, I was not really exposed to maths. And we needed to be sharp in arithmetical skills, even for chartered accountancy. So I would go to a certain devotee, who was a close friend, to learn maths. And one fine evening, when I was driving to his home, it was, I think, about 8 o'clock, Bemel is the renowned factory. Right behind the Bemel gate, there is a small cement road here in eastern Bangalore. And there is a bench. And uh, a little further away from there is a railway crossing. 8 o'clock in the evening, I am driving on my bike and I am going on that road towards this friend's house. Just before the railway crossing, I think about 200 meters before the crossing, I suddenly hear a clear voice. Shh, shh, as if to say, listen. And I turn around and to my utter surprise, I see Bhagwan in his full pristine form, sitting on a bench, happily sitting on that bench, and he is swinging his legs because his feet were not touching the ground, and the full darshan of Swami on the chair. And I rubbed my eyes and said, is this real? And I threw the bike and went near, and I actually clasped the feet. And it was real. It was real Swami sitting on that bench. And then Swami immediately gets into a conversation as if nothing happened. He says, look at the moon. I said, yes, Swami. I was shivering. I don't know. There was absolutely no control over myself. He says, look at the moon. Now there is the moon. Tomorrow morning there will be the sun. The sun will come, the moon will come. The sun will come, the moon will come. 
Life is also like this, he said. Good times, bad times, good times, bad times. It will go on changing. But I am with you. And he was swinging his feet, his hands were on his lap, as if nothing happened. Calmly was seated, and I was perspiring. Looking back, I wonder why that kind of an emotion came. It was a most fascinating experience to see the Lord himself, out of the blue, seated on an obscure bench off a cement road behind Bemel factory on the eastern side of Bangalore on one insignificant night. He chose to come sit there to give darshan and to give an assurance that I am there. And, I, and after that, Swami gets up and he walks towards the railway crossing and I watch him walk, 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 walk. And as he comes till the railway crossing, he just disappears. And I rub my eyes. This sounded like something in Amar Chitra Katha or one of those movies. I rub my eyes and I said, my God, was this real? What was this, this that happened? And I took the bike. I must have driven like a madman back to my house. I threw the bike outside. I go up to my room. And on all the pictures of Swami, there was Vibhuti. Every single picture was full of Vibhuti. And the next day itself, and that night I developed high fever and I was not in control of myself at all. The next day, Swami sends Mr. K. R. Prasad home and he comes to tell my father, Swami said, he gave a vision to your son, but ask him not to get worried. Where is he now? And I was outside, my father called me in and I was shivering and Mr. Prasad says, Swami has told us about the vision he gave you, but you need not worry, just remain calm. And I was speechless, I didn't even know what to say. After two days, I come for darshan, hey Gittu. I didn't know what to answer, I was dumb, I didn't even know those days how to respond, what to say, I just kept quiet, I clasped his feet and kept crying. This incident, he did, I think, to just prove a point that this was divinity that you are encountering. This is God himself. And I will go to any extent to tell you that I am there with you. This incident gave me a feeling of intense joy from within. It gave me a feeling of belongingness. It made me realize that the earthly mother is not there anymore, but I don't need to worry because I have him for me completely. Soon after that, in January 92, Swami, again we were sitting here, he comes in his darshan and he says, Bombay. So I said, I didn't understand what did Bombay mean. I just kept seated. He was going around, came back, tomorrow morning, Bombay. So I didn't realize what this was all about and I kept quiet. After darshan was over, I went into Thrai to the other side. I remember Mr. Joga Rao and uh, Mr. Srinivas and others were sitting there. I said, Sir, Swami said, Bombay, what does this mean? So they said, Swami is leaving for Mumbai tomorrow morning. That is all that we can tell you now. We can't tell you anything beyond this. And I felt Swami must probably have meant you also come to Bombay. Just look at the kind of audacity in the expectation. A small fry. How could I even imagine that the Lord will want me to travel with him to Mumbai? So I said, I don't think this is the right thought. But I said, let me still go to the airport. I'll pack my bags. I'll get ready to travel with Swami to Mumbai. And fortunately at that time, I was in the closing stages of my chartered accountancy course and uh, I used to file income tax returns for all the Indian Airlines employees. So these chaps were very good pals with me. So at a short notice I could get a seat. I could also manage to tell them that I want something which is a seat which is located very close to where Swami was seated. Swami was in 7A, seat number 7A. 7B was Sir Radha Krishna, 7C was Sir Joga Rao. So I somehow 
muscled myself and got 7D. And uh, the next morning, I land up at the airport. And because I'm pals with all these people, I get to go near the aircraft. And I'm standing there right at the foot of the flight of stairs. And Swami comes. The car door opens. He looks at me and says, oh, you have come. As if he didn't know at all. He had created all this. And then he makes you feel as if this was all incidental. Oh, you have come. And then he came straight. And I said, Swami, I am also coming with you to Bombay. Come, come, come. He held the hand. And the entire flight of steps, he took me with him up, right up to the top. And then he goes in, where is your seat? So I said, Swami, that seat, 7D. Ah, Kutko. So I sat down. And then the flight started, and it was a phenomenal journey from Bangalore to Mumbai. I just couldn't believe my, myself that I was actually traveling with the Lord in the same aircraft and sitting on the same row as he was. And every time I would turn and look, what is he doing? Now what is he doing? Now what is he doing? And in between, he was opening the Hindu newspaper and showing everybody the big advertisements put up there about the welcome Mumbai was giving to Swami. He passed on the paper to everybody. And then he, was, he had some fruit which he had got. He was cutting it and passing it on. Then the crew of the flight came. He posed for photographs with them. And then a lot of people started getting up, wanting to get pictures autographed by Swami. And Swami told me, hey, get up, crowd control model. So I was standing between him and the rest. And uh, I must confess here that there was a lot of ego which came in suddenly. Because ego, like Swami said, I never gave ego to you. You people got it on the way. So, on the journey from home to the airport and that flight of stairs up with him, I brought the sufficient quantity of ego with me. I was standing there and each person would come and try to get the picture and I would take it, give it, get it signed, give it back with all that, you know, the ego was pouring all out. And Swami kept looking and said, Oh, Kutko. Because immediately he has to kill it. That is the mercy of this Lord. The moment you falter, the moment you start deviating, he will correct you instantly. There was no delay in it at all. Kutko. So I immediately went and sat down. Then as the flight was about to land in Mumbai, I went up to Swami. And Swami had mercifully given me 10 minutes time to talk about my mother's last days and he said where she was now and it was a very touching conversation with him. Towards the end I said, Swami, I am coming to Mumbai with you but I have no place to stay in Bombay so I will also be coming and staying with you only, isn't it, in Dharmakshetra? He said, illa illa and he turned away. And I was taken aback. I said, my God, where will I go now? Because I had some 180 rupees or something in my pocket. And I was, all the feeling in me was traveling with the Lord. Obviously, the Lord must have made all arrangements to stay with him. And here he very coolly says, no, no. And then uh, I said, so where will I stay, Swami? He says, you go to Shirdi. You don't stay in Mumbai. You go immediately to Shirdi. All arrangements are not made, he said. So I said, how could you do arrangements? You never told me about Shirdi. This is the first time you are telling me. Then he said, in the airport, your uncle and aunt will come. I said, but I have not told anybody that I am coming. No, no, they are coming. Go and sit down. So you are left. Because these are all tests to elevate a soul spiritually. The moment the Lord gives you a glimpse of divinity and then takes his feet back, takes one step backward, the craving gets intensified. When the craving gets intensified, the prayer gets intensified. That few moments before the flight landed, I must have prayed like mad. I must have prayed, what is happening? How do I go? What are the next few moments? I have been told Mumbai is a mad city, big city. People have absolutely no emotions. I am sorry if there are anybody from Mumbai here. but. Uh, I had all kinds of thoughts about Bombay and uh, I said, where will I go in that big world? So I just sat down and I, the flight landed, the car comes, Swami gets into the car and zips off. And I am watching, oh, he's gone. And now what? 
Then I walk into the airport, and uh, surprise of surprises, my uncle and aunt are standing there. And I went to them and said, how come you people are here? I never called you all. They said, no, a friend of ours is coming from Ahmedabad. We have come to receive him, and how come you are here? <laughs> so they were there, and I, was, I heaved a sigh of relief that there was someone known to me in sight in that big city. I went there, and then I told my aunt, I have to go to Shirdi, and she immediately arranged a bus ticket for me the same night. I went to Shirdi. The moment I landed, it was, I think, 3.30 or something in the morning, I reached there. A small boy comes, and he takes complete control. I have no, I had not, not to do anything at all after I reached Shirdi. He comes, he says, there is a room arranged for you. He takes me to one room. Then he gets a puja thali organized. Then he says, you come with me. Those days, directly, you could go to the Samadhi Mandir. He takes me there. He takes me to all the places that next day in the afternoon till I left Shirdi, he was my guardian, my everything, a small boy. And at the end of it, I had a fantastic time in Shirdi and had blissful darshan, came back to Mumbai, and the heart was craving for Swami. I wanted to see him. I wanted to go to Dharmakshetra to know what is happening. And there was no news at all. People said, huge crowds. The, there is barricade put everywhere. My aunt said, I will try my best to get you in, but it is very difficult. And uh, things went on like this for two days. No darshan of Swami, only hearing about him from people, reading about it in the newspaper. I chose to remain contented in my aunt's place. Third day, I decided, I got to know that Swami was returning back to Bangalore. I think it was the 24th of Jan, 92, if I'm not mistaken, when he was planning to come back, or the 30th, something like that. 24th is when we traveled, and I think 30th he was returning, or something like that. When I got to know that he's returning back, my immediate thought was, let me try and see if I can get a seat next to him again, on the way back. At least let me try to use something to get a seat again on the same row, somewhere close to him. So Mumbai, of course, I didn't know the people in the airlines. I went there. And uh, they had booked seats in different computers. Nobody was willing to tell me which particular flight Bhagwan was taking back to Bangalore for security reasons. And the seats were also booked in different names. It was not Joga Rao, it was Rao Joga. It was not Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba, it was Baba Sri Satya Sai. It was something else for someone else. So when I was giving them a name, they said this name is not figuring in the system at all. So I got frustrated and suddenly one person says, he is leaving tomorrow morning by so and so flight. And I told him, I must have a seat on that flight. With Swami's grace, I got a seat on the flight, wave, return journey also. The next morning, I reached the airport in Mumbai. And uh, due to some reasons on the way, I got delayed. By the time I have reached the airport, the check-in had already started. So I couldn't get an opportunity to get the seat of my choice. So I was standing in the queue. 7A was Swami, again. 7B, 7C, 7D, 7E, 7F, 7G, all those seats were booked for him, for the whole troop. So the man in front of me got 7E. And I was pouring over his shoulder to see what is on his boarding card. And I saw 7E. And the next was my turn. That man gave me 11. So I looked at it and I said, but I want something in that row 7. And this previous passenger was hearing. He had a horrific flight from Bangalore to Mumbai because he was on the same row while going. He's a non-devotee. Because of the crowd and the rush that was going to Swami, he didn't want to be on the same row where Swami was. So he said, is Sai Baba traveling again on this flight? The, the person at the counter said, yes. Then I don't want anything in row number seven. You give me something in the back. So I again got 7E, and I was seated. And Swami came. It was, I think, 6.45 in the morning when we departed from Mumbai. 
Swami entered the flight, he saw me, he called and he said, why did you go to the mandir first? You should have gone to Dwarakamai. I said, my God, that means he was actually keeping track and following every single movement in Shirdi. I told you that you should have gone to Dwarakamai. I said, Swami, you never told. I told you. I said, Swami, you only asked me to go to Shirdi. This is my first visit to Shirdi. How will I know where to go? Then I realized the boy who was there kept telling me again and again, first let's go to Dwarkamai, first let's go to Dwarkamai. And I was pushing him and telling him, no, first the mandir, because when you come to a holy place, you must first go to the mandir. So I dragged this boy and took him to the Samadhi Mandir. And this chap was adamant, no, Dwarkamai, Dwarkamai. Swami said, how many times I told, you didn't listen. And then I realized that the Lord had chosen one more occasion to travel a distance, to actually be there and to show us the right path. He said, all arrangements I have made, he lived up to his word. He was there to receive at the bus stand, take me through everything, get the room booked, get the darshan organized, everything he did. We, in our ignorance, didn't follow the directions of the Lord. Unless we submit ourselves and surrender ourselves completely to the will of the Lord, it becomes very difficult for the Lord also to sometimes work through our obstinacy. We must understand that every act, every word that has come from Him is bound to happen. I said, Swami, I'm very sorry. And then He said, here, Dharmakshetra Prasadam. So He gave laddu, then He gave some fruit, then He gave something. You know, with Swami it is not one or two, it will keep coming. Once He starts, it will keep on. And he said, Tinu, it was 6.45 in the morning and Laddu was there, something else was there, a fruit was there. Probably he knew this guy will have a fantastic appetite. So I started eating everything, finished. And the journey back ended to Bangalore. There was nothing really uh, unique or significant which happened during the journey between Swami and me at a physical level. But one thing that happened during this trip was, I suddenly felt that he was time and again trying to choose occasions, trying to create a feeling clearly that you are mine. Somewhere I started feeling this love of his was engulfing me so intensely, steadily, that I started feeling a sense of belonging to him. I felt this body, this being, this life is only for him and for nothing else and for no one else. This feeling was very steadily building up and uh, this trip was one other reminder that God will go to any extent to do anything for you. The Shirdi trip ended, we came back, lot of ego. I came back to our Samiti. You know, I went to Bombay with Swami. You know, I traveled with Swami. I meet anybody there. Yeah, yeah, recently Swami went to Bombay and he took me with him. Shirdi, he actually asked me to go to Shirdi. You don't know. My first trip to Shirdi, actually Swami himself sent me. Ego, wherever I go, it was built up. It was coming all over. Swami decided to cut this. The next two years, he just cut off. He was reforming from within. There was no physical interaction at all. He would ignore, he would avoid completely. He was in a divine way present, physical level. He made clear. In fact, there were occasions where I remember if I'm seated at a particular place, he will ignore that entire line. He used to ignore the whole bunch of people near me. And so if people didn't want to have darshan, they could have chosen to sit next to me. It was that bad. It was, it went on and one and I used to cry. I used to wonder what mistake have I done to be treated like this. And he would, the moment he spots me, he will turn the face. But little did I realize that all this was again done out of his infinite love. See, the mercy in the Lord is so great. Every act that he did and does and will continue to do will only be for our upliftment. I don't think a physical level ignorance, a physically ignoring a devotee means that he is shrugging off a devotee or, or keeping him aside. I don't think that is the way to interpret it at all. 
everything that he did was elevating us spiritually all the while. So the next one and a half, two years went in this intense craving, intense craving for him. There was a room at home which I had made as my room with my Lord. And I had put Swami's pictures all over in that room. And there was a table, which was my study table. And I had my cot in the same room. And I used to spend all my time either doing my articleship or studying there or doing my prayer. Everything was in that room. And the way he would show his presence, Vibhuti would get covered in all the pictures. And so appropriately, on every examination day, there used to be a huge outburst of Vibhuti from the photos. And it was like ready prasadam available, so you go take Vibhuti and then go to write the exam. And I know, looking back, the only reason I can assure you this, for having done whatever little I did in my chartered accountancy and other professional exams, was only due to the grace through that Vibhuti. And Swami, in fact, mentioned this in 2007. One day he was on a trip. He, whomever he was introducing me to, he said, Vinay Kumar, chartered accountant. He called somebody into the interview room. He said, Wali Avru Telsa, chartered accountant. So I said, uh, this is becoming too much. So I said, Swami, I am nothing. You know what I am. Yalla Ratra Nihogi, you are saying chartered accountant, chartered accountant. What is this? Ah, Avate Vibhuti Kote. Avate Prasadam Koti Dini. Adu Thongondi the K exam pass Marade. I said, when your prasadam was the reason for my passing, how can you go on introducing me like this? In fact, that room became so special. In 2010, December, I remember Swami had asked us to get an album made of the house. And um, he was, he called uh, one of our senior trustees in Karnataka Trust, Mr. Gangadhar Shetty Garu. He asked him to hold the album and he asked me to turn the leaves the pages. He was seeing every room of the house. And when it came to this particular room, Swami says, this room is not room. This room is room interview room. He said. So I said, Swami, what is this? He said, all the furniture you remove from that room, that room should become the interview room. Whenever I come, I'll grant interview in that room. So everything was connected everything had a purpose everything doesn't happen just due to coincidence it is a beautiful deliberate divine design it has all got a purpose behind it these incidents where he after my mother passed away steadily to start doing this and drawing me closer and closer and closer and closer and giving this reassurance time and again time and again i am there i am there reminding me through action through words gave me that feeling that I am his and he is mine. There is no doubt about this. That got very firmly entrenched with it. The years that followed after that had a few ups, a few downs. There are so many things that happened for lack of time. I probably will not be able to go through all that, but I will share with you all a few beautiful incidents of his immense love that pure, pristine love of the Lord, which only He could have given and nobody else could have given. I want to share a few of those incidents. There was one particular incident. Swami had granted us an interview on one afternoon. And towards the end of the interview, ah, you know, these are typical Swami at the end of the interview would signal you to get the vibhuti tray and then once he gives you the vibhuti packets, you are supposed to take namaskar and leave the room. Ah, vibhuti kodu. So I held the tray, he gave vibhuti, and we got up, and we said, Swami, we are leaving to Bangalore now. Ah, hok We got up, came out, went to the room. Swami went into the bhajan mandir. He was seated on the throne for the bhajans, evening bhajans. And we, instead of sitting there, have gone back to the room. We have started unpacking everything dressed into my colored clothes and getting ready to start for Bangalore. And suddenly a boy comes to the room and knocks and says, Sir Swami is calling you back. And I said, for what? Just now we took his permission. Have I done any mistake? And I was shivering. I said, has anything gone wrong unknowingly? Have I done something wrong? I don't know. So 
I just in those colored clothes, I just rushed back to the mandir. And uh, the last bhajan I think was going on, it was around 5.30, 5.35 in the evening. Aarti was about to be offered. Swami was on the throne. The registrar, our earlier registrar, he said, where did you go? Swami was asking, come sit. So they made me sit. That was probably one of the few occasions when you didn't want to be under the direct sight of the Lord. Because I was full of fear. I didn't know what mistake I have done. And they were pushing me closer and closer and closer to the bhajan door. And I was right there and he was on the chair. And he could see me clearly, but he was immersed in the bhajans. Totally immersed, full of that bliss. And I was hoping that when he opens his eyes, he's in a good mood. And when he opens his eyes, I don't become ash or something like that. You know, and uh, the bhajan ended. Aarti and Swami slowly opened his eyes. He looked and he gave a smile. And then I knew, oh, there is nothing wrong that has happened. Nothing so drastically wrong that must have happened. If he has given that smile, everything must be fine. But I still didn't understand why did he call us back from that room when just one hour ago we were with him for almost 40 minutes. Swami accepts Aarti, gets off the throne, comes till the bhajan mandir door, calls me and says, Pada Namaskara Tago. So I take Namaskar. He says, Namaskara Tagol Dene Hoktai Dela. Adike Kardu Namaskara Kodake Karde. You are leaving Puttaparthi without taking my Namaskar. I called you back so that I can give you Namaskar and send you. This much love. I don't think you can get from anybody. It is impossible. Why should the Lord do it? Just imagine, we are, at least I know what I am, for a measly creature like that, to call him all the way back, to tell him I have called you to give you namaskar. This only Swami could do. I don't think anybody, no other avatar can do this. Only he could do this. There was another incident which touched me so much. It was one afternoon, it was during the days when the Athirudra Mahayagna was going on in Prashanti Nilayam. <clears throat> I remember one afternoon we were running around and there was a lot of work to be completed. I had not had my breakfast, I had not had lunch. A lot of work was pending for the afternoon session. And suddenly Swami sent word around 12.45, said ask him to come. I went home, I entered the dining hall. Swami was seated there. The secretary of our trust, uh, the former secretary was standing there. And Swami says, Uta Madilva. He said, Illa Swami, Kutko. So I said, Swami, how can I sit on the same table where you have your food? I will sit down. I was hungry, believe me. I was very hungry. And when somebody offers you food and when somebody offers it with so much love, how can you refuse? I said, Swami, I'll sit down and I'll eat. Mele Kutko. And he made me sit. And then he fills up the plate with everything. Then he says, Ivatu Yadivsa. I said, Ivatu Krishna Janmashtami. It was Janmashtami on that day. Oh, oh. so Nan Uta Kudbeku. He takes his chair, clothes, Papa. Tai Tande Idre, Uta Kurta Idru. Yaru Illa, Nane Kudbeku. So he takes every hand and feeds. And from that chair, because he had to really strain and put his hands into my mouth and give those few mouthfuls of food, I, I did not know what to do. I actually said, Swami, at this moment, please take away my prana. Because I don't think I can ever have so much love again in my life. This is too much, you know, this much of love, I don't think anybody can give to anyone. Why should he call? Why should he call and give food and feed me? He says, Illa Bangaru, Thako. He goes on, goes on. I said, Swami, your fingers, they are into my mouth. Why? He said, take away my prana now, Swami. It is enough. He says, prana to go mitra and kelsa yar martha re. Hogu. Hogu arrangements madu. As if nothing happened. He takes you into the depths of that divine love 
he soaks you bathes you immerses you in that love and then the disciplinarian in him the mother in him the merciful lord in him to put you on the path to teach you non attachment go go and do your work so he sent me back and work went on this incident was again so touching later on in fact once when he called home for lunch he was feeding us with so many things finally at one stage there was some bengan masala or something which was served and i was not touching it and swami kept on watching then he said hey tinu i was trying to be too smart i said swami idella tamsik he said nan jothe yen thagondru adu satvik agutte tinu so he made me eat that and uh, of course my hand was itching to have it but you know you have to prove your extra smartness you know so then he gave chocolate ice cream vanilla ice cream butterscotch they came in one ready sequence and they went through the gullet smoothly steadily as fast as it could and after that he says mm, last ice cream yavdu said chocolate chocolate tinle bardu you must not have chocolate ice cream only now anyway they have made a mistake i'll give you fruits now so then fruits come variety of fruits keep coming and after the fruits are taken finally when we were all coming to swami to take his namaskar before leaving he says bangaru uta seriyaga agilla after all this huh? he says next time un nane ready maadi kodtini so this kind of love on and off on and off was a little too much to you know fathom i think it was not too much to uh, understand but it was too much to fathom because only god can give this kind of love there was another beautiful incident we have time every time we would go to parthi i would take uh, some nevidyam for swami prepared at home on one such occasion we had taken khara bundi for him and that afternoon he called us inside and during the interview he said ah indian samachara so i said swami nothing and then nanage yen thagond bandidya what have you got for me i said nothing swami you see the ignorant mind no i couldn't even think of removing my bag and removing the vessel i said yenila indian samachara he wanted it to come out and i am not telling i am not remembering it again bangalore in the bhariya yeno maadi kalisirbekalla your wife must have prepared something and sent then i realized oh she gave me one bowl full of khara bundi i said howdu swami howdu swami khara bundi ide kodu so the bundi is removed and i place it at his lotus feet he says swalpa kodu so that spoon the grace the finesse that this avatar has is something so unique his hand movements the way he would look at you his the way he would brush that hair aside the way he would shrug off a, fl- a mosquito which if it was sitting on his robe the way he would glance at you suddenly the way he would put food into his mouth everything was so perfect the way he took the spoon took bundi in that like this and one bundi fell down and it rolled on that carpet the interview room and my eyes immediately shifted to that one bundi and i decided somehow i should hold this and put it into my pocket because how can that bundi be there and swami was talking he was saying all kinds of things but look at man instead of focusing on the divine wisdom which the lord was trying to shower i was more concerned about that one small khara bundi which was rolling somewhere on the carpet suddenly swami said hey adu kodu i said swami how can i give this to you this fell down and on the same carpet we have all been walking how can i give it to you swami it is not possible i cannot give this i cannot even offer it to you he said whatever is offered to me with love i will accept give it 
So instantly I gave it and instantly he took it. And he said, Tumma Santosha. And I was feeling guilty. I said, how could I have even offered something which had fallen down? But the Lord chose to give it a totally different interpretation. He said, anything that is offered to me with love, I will accept. This was the extent of his love. This was the extent of his compassion. He was not worried about the quantity. He was worried only about the quality. His love, I think, immeasurable. I remember two other incidents. Suddenly it comes to my mind during the Atirudram. I remember on the first day of the Yagna, it was supposed to have started in the evening of the 9th of August, the functions. And that afternoon, you know, how much of build up had, build up had happened for this Yagna and Swami was talking about it to everybody. And believe me, I want to say this in front of Swami today. Again, I mentioned this in front of him in Kulvanthal during those Yagna days. Yet again in this Ramesh Hall, I want to tell you all, this Yagna entire thing was conceived, thought, executed entirely by him. People very often make this mistake and associate us with it. We are no way connected, entirely conceived by him, executed by him. Every small thing he did, everything he did connected to the Yagna. There was nothing. He even got the ghee organized from Punjab. He got all the ahutis organized. He got the firewood organized. He got the homakundas organized. He got the rangoli to be put around. The Everything was done by him. So I remember that morning, there was still a lot of work to be done. And uh, Swami suddenly calls me at about 12 o'clock home. And when I enter, he says, Nodu Bangaro, if your parents had been there, all arrangements, they would have taken care. Now your parents are not there. So you don't get tensed and worried at all. You go now and sleep. You go to your room and sleep. You have good rest, get up, have a good bath, and straight you come to the hall. I will take care of all the arrangements. I said, Swami, there is so much work still pending. Allow me to finish that little work. I will go to the room at 3 o'clock. I'll have my bath and come. Bada, bada, bada. You should not go through. If your parents had been there, I would not have called you. Since your parents are not there, I am telling you, go to your room and sleep. And I had to obey him because whatever the Lord says should be obeyed. There are no two ways about it. Some things which he says might seem very basic on the face of it, but there would be a great significance beyond what he said. So I religiously went to the room and I took my good nap. On the day of the Yagna, believe me, that day we are starting. <laughs> And the whole world might have thought, this guy must be very busy. Actually, I was resting in the room and Swami was busy getting all arrangements made. And I got up, had a bath and right royally came. And at 2.45, some knock on the door. And that man says, Swami has sent flask with coffee. I said, what is this? What is the great thing that we are doing for the Lord to actually take care and send some coffee? Uh, this is love. This kind of care, that motherly care, you know, the words which he said was, if your parents had been there, it was different. Now that your parents are not there, I have to take care. Even the first morning when the prana pratishta had to be done, with due respect to all the elders in the organization and in the trust, many of them said, Swami, why should you do the prana pratishta early morning at 6 o'clock? Please take rest. Let us do it after 9 o'clock. And Swami called each one of them. I remember that incident where he called each one of the elders into the interview room. And I was seated there. And he would ask each one of them, ah, this yagna he is telling, is it all okay? And then everybody gave Swami their own interpretations. And they said, Swami, is so early in the morning. There is no need. Let us do it at 9 o'clock. And Swami finally heard them all out and sent them. And Swami said, you don't worry what anybody is saying. I will come. I will come at 6 in the morning and I will do the prana pratishta. And then I said, Swami, but at physical level you should not take the strain. I will come because if your parents had been there again and again, again and again, the same thing. If your parents had been there, they would have taken care, they would have been there. Since they are not there, I have to come. So I said, Swami, so much you have done, everything is done by you. Why should you take that? No, I will come. 
and promptly that morning at 6 a.m. he comes. He does the prana pratishta. And when he is leaving in the car, I told you I'll come, I have come. So this kind of concern, this kind of care, this kind of a feeling that he kept giving me that I am there. You don't have to worry that you have nobody else, I am there. This is not a feeling just given to me. This is a feeling that is applicable to the entire humanity that God in that form is available for all of us and is there to take care of us. In 2007 March, my wife and I, unfortunately, we had a very bad road accident on our way back from Prashanti Nilayam one morning. It was a Thursday. That morning when I took permission to leave to Bangalore, the first thing Swami asked was, Waifu Bartai Dara Vapasu. I wondered why was he asking that because it was a normal thing. Every time we would go together and return together. I said, how do Swami? Ha ha. Very disgruntedly, he gave permission. And so we sat down and uh, afterwards we left at about 1 o'clock from there. 12.30, I think. Somewhere near this, after the uh, highway was crossed, when we were coming towards Chikbalapur, the Devanali Cross, we had a terrible road accident. It was a Volvo bus hitting our car head-on. I was not driving very fast, but the bus, the, the road was wrongly structured there. He came and hit head-on. And um, the car was smashed completely. She collapsed immediately lot of blood, almost a liter of blood was out, head injury, she just became unconscious. And I was sitting and uh, I had blood all over me, injuries all over me. I didn't know what to do, we were not even able to remove her out of the car. She was caught and we went through a lot of trauma. I mean, it's a very long story, if I get, keep talking about it, it'll go on for the next two hours, I think. A good Samaritan came, he took us to the Devanhalli government hospital. At a particular point, the hospital head said, she is no longer there. You have to understand that she is not there anymore. She has gone cold, everything has ended. We cannot revive her now. So now we will arrange an ambulance for you to take your, the body back, the body back to Bangalore. And I said, I cannot believe this. I mean, how can this happen? And the first thought was Swami. And I called one of our seniors in Puttaparthi, who went straight to Swami and reported, Swami, yeah, and then Gottu, you tell him nothing is wrong. Tell him to tell the doctors to give her an injection. And uh, he calls me back and he says, Swami has instructed that you should tell the doctor to give her an injection. And I, I go to the doctor and tell him, and that man shouts at me. He says, what are you talking? She is not there anymore. We have already covered the body and kept. How do you expect us to give her an injection? Have you gone mad? I said, Sai Baba has sent this message. He says, I don't know how to respond. You go and tell Sai Baba she's already gone. I said, but since he has said it, you please do it. So he instructs the nurse, and that lady just takes an injection and gives, like that. And the moment that injection was given, ah, she said. So I said, how can she, she is alive? How can she, how can you say she is gone? And then he says, this is, this is unimaginable. And the doctors all started fretting and they couldn't imagine what was happening in front of their eyes. And finally they thought something had gone wrong with us. Something was wrong at a different plane. I hope you understand. They got scared that somebody whom they had declared as dead was actually making a noise and coming back. They thought something was drastically wrong, but they couldn't appreciate the fact that this was a great Leela of the Lord. And we then put her on an ambulance. It was again a lot of miracle that an ambulance got arranged. Brand new ambulance comes there with a driver, in crisp, clean uniform. First time the ambulance is being driven by him. He takes us and on the way continuously, Chakravarti sir is giving information. Swami has said, go to Nimhans, don't worry, there is so-and-so doctor, go take care. So we go, the doctor is waiting there. Incidentally, this doctor, Satya Prabha, is the daughter of um, a doctor who is to come to Swami. I think it was Narsapa, 
Narasapa's daughter is this Dr. Satyaprabha. We went to Nimans and everything was ready. And I was soaked in blood, injuries everywhere. I don't know how I was even moving around. There were some, all kinds of injuries. She was still in almost a very delirious, unconscious state. We reached the hospital. The doctor takes her in. They do all kinds of tests. They say the, the, the thin layer of the brain got saved by a few millimeters of inches or something like that. It was a miraculous escape. They said she needs to be there for a few weeks. And believe me, in two days' time, with Swami's divine intervention, she got discharged. She came back home. I'm cutting this story short because we don't have time. Miraculously, he intervened and he got her out of the hospital. And that night, the night when I admitted her in the hospital, I went back home. I came home to get change clothes for her. And when I entered the house, the entire kitchen was full of glass pieces. The entire kitchen was flooded with glass pieces. And I didn't realize what was this, how could glass pieces be there in the kitchen? Anyway, I, I asked the lady in the house, what is this? And she was also shocked. Went back to the hospital, we went through the treatment. And all. Every day, the next 15 days, every day in the evening, Swami would inquire. He would make somebody or the other call, ask them how are they, ask them what is happening. Today, how is she? Today, how is she? And on the, on the second day after the accident happened, Swami, in fact, got into the car and said, take me to his house. I want to go now. And then somebody said, Swami, they are still in Nimhans. So he said, ask them to take rest. Every evening, 6, 6.30, 6, 6.30, a call would come. How are they? How are they? How are they? After 15 days, he sent a message, ask them to come to Parthi. So we both went to Puttaparthi. That afternoon, he was seated. Swami comes at 3.45 and he takes the, in student's terminology, it is that square cut, the first cut on the side, the moment he comes into the hall, the first cut he took and he comes around. The moment he is entering the veranda, he says, Punar Janma Koti Dini, Punar Janma Koti Dini. So I said, I went to him, I said, Swami, everything was gone and you, you did something which nobody can do. I mean, I didn't know how to express. What will you tell the Lord who has given life back? Call her inside. So I asked her to come. As we are entering the interview room, Swami says, Punar Janma, Punar Janma. He says, Hod Janma Delhi, Yene no Martha Idri. E Janma Sai Gagi Matra. You did all kinds of things in earlier births. This birth is only for Sai. And then he narrated the entire incident. He said how it happened. He said, I was standing on the road divider and you are crying. He said, you keep telling you have a lot of faith in me. But when you saw your wife was collapsing and dying, you were crying. You didn't even once call out to me. What is this faith that you have? And I was standing there and I was laughing at you. I said, why did you laugh? He said, Swami, I said, Swami, how can you laugh? He said, you had no faith in me. You are continuously crying. You should have called out to me. You should have cried out to me. You didn't call out to me. But I didn't let you go. I did everything that was required. When the injection was put in, I put the prana inside, he said. In fact, after saying this, I actually started off telling you all, I, I told Swami, I want to narrate this incident in Kulvant Hall in front of everybody, Swami. You have to give me the permission. And he said, Idu kinna samaya bandila, samaya bandaga nin helu. Ivaga beda, samaya bandaga helu, he said. And I asked him many times after that, I said, Swami, permit me to tell this, permit me to tell this. And this morning, when I was sitting in my puja, and I said, Swami, at least today, allow me to share this incident in that hall that Garland just cut. And so I decided that I must share this experience with all of you today. And after that, after this, what he said was, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm not able to even now believe what he said. He said, those 15 days, Swami said, Every time I used to take food and take it near my mouth, I could not eat. 
because I was thinking about you. He said, I have not eaten properly for 15 days. So much of love, I tell you, I don't, I don't think I deserve it. I don't think we all deserve it. So much he did, so much he's doing. We have not risen up to what he wanted us to do. We are not rising up. We are still caught in our mundane issues only. This was absolute true divinity. This was divinity in its fullest form. Can you imagine Lord saying, I could not eat because I was thinking about you. 15 days he said, Nan uta maadi la mangaru. And I held his hand and said, Swami, why? For us, for us, why Swami, we are not worth it. We are not worth all this love. This much love you should not give Swami. We will not be able to take it. And somehow it ended. He gave us so much love after that. In the next few days, he kept us in Prashanti Nilayam. He took care every time inquiring, every time asking. So much care, so much love, so much love. When he was sending us back in that visit, when we were returning back to Bangalore, he said, In me da, naan gadi hinde, back seat ali naan kut koltini. I said, Swami, he said, Nin yava gella fast hoktiyo, naan control martini. Ye nu chinte martbeda, naan back seat ali naan kut koltini. Front ali nivu, back ali naanu, he said. And after that, there was a very mundane thought. I want to just add this incident because there was a very mundane uh, need. The car that I had was a wagon R, white color, which met with the accident. A Volvo bus, it's a wagon R, you can imagine. And I incidentally, in that interview, asked Swami about the glass pieces. And he said, when the bus hit the car, all the glass pieces and the steering should have come and hit your face. I turned the steering and put it the other way, and all those glass pieces, I put it off in your kitchen. That is why all those glass pieces were in the kitchen. So he can go to any extent, uh, brothers and sisters. There is absolutely no limit. He is here now. I know he is here. You can feel it. He is very much here. It's unfortunate we are not able to see it with these eyes. We need to elevate ourselves, uplift ourselves to an extent we can see him continuously. But he is here. It is so clearly evident he is here. After this incident was over, there was a mundane requirement at a very human, earthly level. I had to get a new car, obviously, because the car was all smashed. There was no way it could have any... In fact, people who were driving back from Prashanti Nilayam to Bangalore on that day, and they saw the car, they said, this chap is gone. He has merged. <laughs> so there were a lot of rumors going on that he's already gone, because the car was completely shattered. And I then asked Swami, after a few weeks, he had stopped me from driving the car for two months, and then he said, uh, Kosakar Togabeka? I said, yes, Swami. Then I had a craving. I'm telling you to the extent a Lord can go, even to satisfy your mundane desires, small, petty, earthly, worldly desire. I wanted to have a big car. So I said, Swami, easily, Doddu Kar Togabeko. So he says, ah, car do, ah, papers Allah kodtare, vere, vere, vere karu, adalla tagonba, nane select martini. So we even went down to the extent of converting the Lord into a car dealer. I got a number of brochures and I wanted to buy a Honda City. It was in my innermost desire, mundane, petty desire, like I said, was I wanted to buy the Honda City. I wanted to have a grey color car. Just because I said the color should be the color of Swami's car. So I get all the brochures. And Swami patiently in the interview room goes through every brochure. He asks the background of the companies. I mean, those companies and those products were so blessed that his drishti fell on all their products and those companies. But he went through all that and finally he says, Beda Bangaru, Chik Gadi Itkondre Saku, Dodkar Beda Bangaru. But I was arguing. 
ಇಲ್ಲ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಕಾರ್ ಬೇಕು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಅಲೌ ಮೀ ಟು ಬೈ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಈ ಸೇಸ್ ಬೇಡ ಬಂಗಾರು ದೆನ್ ಈ ಟೆಲ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ವೈಫ್ ಹಿ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ರೂಟ್ ಹಿ ಟೆಲ್ಸ್ ಹರ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಟೆಲ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಬಿಗ್ ಕಾರ್ ವೆರಿ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ನೌ ಡೇಸ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆಶ್ರಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಆಶ್ರಮ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಐ ನೀಡ್ ದ ಕಾರ್ ಸರ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಗಾಡಿ ಸಾಕು ನಾನೇ ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಗಾಡಿ ತೊಗೊಂಡು ಬರ್ತೀನಿ ನನ್ನ ಹತ್ರ ಕಾರ್ಸ್ ಇದೆ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಕಾರ್ಸ್ ಇದೆ ನಾನೇ ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಬೈ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಯು ನೋ ಹಠ ಹೆಡಮೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಹೀ ಸೇಸ್ ಆಯಿತು ಇಟ್ಕೋ ಸೊ ಐ ಗೋ ಹೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಬೈ ದ ಹೋಂಡಾ ಸಿಟಿ ಕಾರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೌಡ್ ಓನರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಾರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಡ್ರೈವ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಪರ್ತಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಗೆಟ್ ದ ಕೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಕೀಪ್ ಇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಈ ಈಸ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ನೋ ಈ ಸೇಸ್ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ಆ ಗಾಡಿ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ತುಂಬ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಕಾರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸ್ಮೂತಾಗಿದೆ ಚಚ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ದೆನ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟಚಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕೀ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಹೀ ಈಸ್ ಟಚಿಂಗ್ ದ ರೋಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇಟ್ ಈ ಇಸ್ ಟಚಿಂಗ್ ದ ಎಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇಟ್ ಈ ಇಸ್ ಟಚಿಂಗ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ಕೀ ಈಸ್ ಅವಾಯ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಪುಷ್ ದ ಕೀ ನಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಹೌ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಕ್ರಾಫ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಹೌ ಕೆನ್ ಯು ಪ್ಲೇ ಗೇಮ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋನ್ he had decided it was just a temporary accommodation to satisfy the mundane desire of a devotee the devotee wants a car okay let him have the joy of owning the car ultimately i will show him the right path so he avoided touching the key and something within me felt that key he didn't touch no that key he didn't touch something is wrong with this car you know that feeling started and you will not believe me brothers and sisters you can ask anybody Honda City is supposed to be a smooth drive. Right from that day, this was I think the second day after we got the car, this car was giving me a rough ride. Each time I sit and I try to drive, I'm getting a rough feeling. I'm not getting even one hundredth of the smoothness of the Maruti Wagoner. And Swami purposely, every time, Hosa Gadi Hengi Deh. And he will be passing and suddenly new car new car like this so one day i said swami a car is too rough to get out of here i just tried to see if he will say okay i'll make it okay or something get out of here instantly no. and in a matter of a few months it was a terrible experience driving that car i almost started hating it and then i one day went to swami and said i made a big mistake swami i don't want that car i want to give it off kotbidu said and i got a buyer and sold the car and then swami says buy the same type of car in which you had the accident i said swami psychologically it will create nightmares for us if you have the same car illa ade car tago so i said you wanted us to have a small car i'll get you brochures of many small cars so once again bhagwan baba becomes a car dealer again i take brochures and this time it is you know the i10 and all those the skoda um, the small car you know this uh, desire, i mean the maruti is other one all kinds of small cars i took and swami immediately picked out the wagoner and said this is not some kind of a publicity for wagoner incidentally i mean i am not marketing for wagoner or i am not part of maruti suzuki in any sense but he instantly picked it out and he said ee car e tago aa car color white itala white e tago and uh, he made us buy the same white color wagoner and he said go get the car bring the keys so much of you know because he knew that was right he knew it was important for us to not have a big profile he knew he was teaching a lesson in contentment he was teaching a lesson in keeping a low profile he was teaching a lesson to show the devotee that lead a life which is not not necessarily ostentatious those were the messages that were coming forth not that he didn't want a person to have a big car or a small car the moment i take the keys had kept it inside a pouch and the pouch was in my pocket and that day happened to be some function in prashanthi nilayam some uh, uh, 
um, one of the districts had come and they were putting up a drama or something like that and Swami was there. He had come, he was already witnessing. I reached Kulwant Hall late. So I was seated there in the veranda and I was hoping that after Aarti, Swami will probably, you know, look at me at least and then I get a chance to go and tell him that the car has been bought. And you will not believe, even as the program was going on, even as the drama was going on, Swami comes backstage, he comes straight there, car to Gondia? He said, yes, key kudu. And uh, I got the key and Swami blessed it. So this is an incident to make us feel that mundane desires, mundane thoughts also he will satisfy. Everything he will satisfy. He is there for us. Whatever he does is in our interest. Nothing that he did or does or will continue to do will ever be against our interest. We need to be available to him. We have to be available for him to shower that mercy on us. That is all that is required. The timing is important. There were a few. Do we have time? How much time? Ten minutes. Okay. Are you all getting bored? Okay. I'll take uh, two more. A very One of them is quite a funny incident. But these come to my mind immediately. Two more incidents where he sort of was trying to convey a message. And the Lord chooses his own style to convey a message. His style is different, you know. One day, I was sitting in the interview room. Suddenly, I incidentally don't know how to sing bhajans. I incidentally don't know anything much about Vedam. Total murkha. God will accept people in spite of all deficiencies. Because that is his mercy. One afternoon, I was sitting at his feet. Suddenly he says, Hey, how do I look to you? Swami said, Hey, hey, Kanistini. And like this, you know. I'm really, I, I'm, I have taken permission to narrate this from Swami directly and I'm sure he will not be angry with me for this because there was a much greater message which he conveyed through this. And then I said, Swami, you are the... Suddenly I felt... I should now praise the Lord to the skies. This is the only opportunity. I said, Swami, you are Parabrahma Swarupa. You are the greatest. You are the most beautiful. There is nothing that is beyond you. Hey, How do I look to you? Tumba Sundar Vagitira Swami, I said. Then I said, Swami, if you permit, I want to sing one small bhajan. So look at the audacity. Somebody who cannot sing bhajans. He's having the audacity to tell the Lord himself who is Saraswati Sakshat that I will sing a bhajan for you. Just look at the audacity in me. I had the guts to tell him that I will sing a bhajan for you. Ah, hello. He knew that this is an absolute Sangeeta Shunya. <laughs> but the mercy in him gave that opportunity. So I said... Uh, I started singing that bhajan, Sai Sundara. I, I actually don't have the guts to even sing it now, because you know, there's still a lot of that ego. But I'll venture into it. I said, Sai Sundara, Sundara. Cha, 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 stop, Madhu, he said. <laughs> and I said, what is this? I'm trying to put in my best and say that I can sing. And he just admonishes you like that. I didn't leave. I continued. Agram. Cha cha. Stop, Madhu. He said. <laughs> then I held his hand and I said, Swami, Raga Tala Ilder Bodu Bhava Ide. Kele Bekni I said. And you not believe, like a small kid. Haitu Bangaru, Helu. And then, with rapt attention, Swami heard the entire song. His eyes are closed, he's in total bliss, total bliss. And there were, there were portions of that song as you proceed further, further, where I was also crying, he was also crying, and I was looking at his face, it was becoming even more and more and more beautiful. It was, the whole face was glowing like that. And then suddenly he opens, Aita, he said, said Swami, then he says, Bhava idre nano avakasha kurtini. If the feeling is there which is pure, I will give an opportunity. 
Bhava is the key, not anything else. That feeling should be there. It was a very great message telling you it was, he chooses something to pass on some other great message to you. Similarly, Ashadi Ekadashi Day was being observed in Prashanti Nilayam. And I think the Mumbai organization which takes care of this, they had arranged for a, uh, a very great music musician to sing that evening. I will not take the artist's name for obvious reasons. But um, after the entire program got over, Swami came into the interview room and called me inside. This was after Aarti in the evening. And Swami says, hey, our songs he gito. I thought you are supposed to praise the artist, no? Because he sat through that for one hour and at the end of it he created some chain and all that also for that lady. So I said, Swami, yen aditru Swami, ishtu chanagi tu Swami, meera bhajanzu yen bhava cha cha adu kacheri, he said. Bhava ne irlila, naan aditri nodu, he said. And then he sang Payoji Mene. And I am telling you, brothers and sisters, the beauty I should use the word that devotion, God showing devotion in his song. Mirabai was sakshat there. He was singing a few verses, he would stop, then cry, talking about Mirabai. This went on for 40 minutes. He narrated the troubles Mirabai went through and he said in spite of those troubles she was crying out to Krishna, that bhava has to come out when you sing. And he sang Payoji Mene, the whole song he sang. And after that I said, Swami, you are an artist, you are an artist, you are better than me. And I said, Swami, obviously it is you only. The artist is after all your creation. Whatever you did now was to convey another message only. So, he wanted bhava. It was that inner feeling, that sincerity, that, that feeling of oneness with the Lord. Once it gets translated to actions in word, deed and action, then obviously the Lord's grace will flow. That mellifluous grace will incessantly flow. There was another very funny incident. Five minutes. Yeah. Where Swami, you know, he, he wanted to teach another lesson. And he took a lot of pain for this. I used to take papers to Puttaparthi whenever we had to, you know, submit something to Swami or discuss about a project. I used to take them in a loose form, loose leaf, all in a folder like that. And um, Swami watched once, twice, thrice, four times, one week, two weeks, three weeks. He kept watching. Then suddenly one day he said, you should not bring papers like this. You should carry it in a bag, proper bag. So I said, I to Swami, I'll get a bag. Next day itself, Swami comes with a bag. And Swami calls inside and says, No, do, naan ninagagi bag tagun mani dini. And it was a beautiful tanned color, semi, you know, beautiful like a hand briefcase, nice bag executive bag he brings and he says Vadagnadi. So he takes me inside and he says he bag it go. In Melenda papers Allah Tagon Barvaga, he bag Ali Hakon Tagonba. I said I was so grateful to him that you know he gave the bag and I came out. After that I was feeling very conscious that I am carrying going to Bhagwan, carrying a briefcase kind of a thing. You know, you feel very awkward when you are going to Swami with a bag and all that, you know. It's like you are going to office or something. So what I would do is, I would hold the bag like this and walk. And Swami saw one day and then the second day and I think it was coming up. Something was about to burst. It was waiting to come out. Third, fourth day. You know, that grim face, he said, go in. I went in and I was shivering. Buddhi la ninge, he said. I said, Yen Aitha Swami. Marriage broker tara bartha gya, he said. Yen Aitha bag hing it kondu marriage broker tara bartha gya. You know, Swami had a typical way of doing this. 
ಮ್ಯಾರೇಜ್ ಪ್ರೋಕರ್ ಥರ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆಯಾ ಪುತ್ತೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ನಿನಗೆ ಈಸ್ ಹೇಳಿ ಕೂತ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ಸರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ವಾಸ್ ಫಿಗರಸ್ಲಿ ವೈಪಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೌತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಈ ಸೆಡ್ ಬ್ಯಾಗ್ ಕೈಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಕೋ ಹತ್ತು ಸಲ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಡಿ ಬ್ಯಾಗ್ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಐ ಸೆಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಹೆಲ್ಡ್ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಸೋ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಡಿಂಟ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಹೀ ವಿಲ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಅದರ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಐ ಡಿಂಟ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಲಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಡಿಂಟ್ ನೋ ವೆದರ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಐ ಡಿಂಟ್ ನೋ ವೆದರ್ ಐ ಶುಡ್ ಕೀಪ್ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಗ್ ಆನ್ ಮೈ ಹೆಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಐ ಡೂ ಐ ಸಮ್ ಓ ಶೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಆಗಿ ನಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೀ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ವೈಲ್ ಕಾಮ್ಲಿ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಲೆಟರ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಸಿಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಚೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಲೆಟರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಒಕೇಶನಲಿ ನಡಿ ನಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಈಸ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೌನ್ ದ ಇಂಟರ್ವ್ಯೂ ರೂಮ್ ಅಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೌನ್ ಅಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೌನ್ ಅಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಾಂ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಮಾಡು ಇಲ್ಲ ಬಾ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಫಿನಿಷ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಲೆಟರ್ ಹಿ ಕಾಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಈ ಸೇಸ್ ನೋಡು ಬಂಗಾರು ಬ್ಯಾಗ್ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡುವಾಗ ಧೈರ್ಯವಾಗಿ ಬೋಲ್ಡಾಗಿ ಚೆಸ್ಟು ಹೊರಗಿಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೆಡ್ಡು ಹೈಯಾಗಿ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಡಿಬೇಕು ಹಿಂಗಿಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಡಿಬೇಕು ನಡಿ ಎಸ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ವಾಕ್ ದೆನ್ ಈ ಸೇಸ್ ಹೌ ಶುಡ್ ಯು ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಗ್ so he opened the compartments he says this compartment keep all these kind of papers this compartment keep these kind of papers then if you have money put it inside the zip then there was a small key so he says you should lock the bag every time lock the bag keep the key you can't believe anybody here so lock the bag and keep the key with you ee tara itko beku bag he spent so much time in guiding how you should walk with a bag and after that I, i don't know many of you must have probably seen me going to puttaparthi with that bag it was a tanned color uh, maroon maroonish color bag and every time swami after that the next two three times no he will call and say ah bag it kon nadi first so once you get into the interview room the first exercise was to walk with the bag <laughs> and people would think this guy is carrying some massive stuff in the bag the fact was those navidyams which we used to take to swami and the papers and actually the bag was being carried because there was a drill going on inside <laughs> and after one month he said ah iga seriyaga nadita idya in mele inda neenu bag thagondu aramaga nadi so he spent all those sessions just to teach how to move around with a bag to this extent the lord can go to drive in perfection because he had this penchant for perfection for him everything had to be immaculately done everything had to be done precisely everything had to be done in a certain manner there was no letting up there was no compromise at all everything had to be done up to a certain level of perfection once he got convinced that the way of holding the bag was right he gave up like this huh? yeah you can go on and on and on and on and on like this there were there were innumerable locations which he took i mean to drive home points which you felt were so simple but the lord spent so much time trying to guide you on this i must tell you that towards the last few months when swami was in that mortal coil ignorance i think it was within us he time and again said ಬೇಗ 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 ಕೆಲಸ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಹೇಳದೆ ಇದ್ರೂ ನೀನು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿ ವಿ ಅವರ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಗೋ ಅವೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲೀವ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಈವನ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲ 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 ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಏನು ಶಾಶ್ವತವಾಗಿರ್ತಾರ ಯು ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಟು ಲೀಡ್ ಅ ಲೈಫ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಸ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಷನ್ಸ್ he was giving a lot of rapid instructions i remember towards the end one very touching incident it happened i think somewhere after the sports day of 2011 suddenly swami one day said where is your house so i said it is in bangalore then he says mysore alli illwa mane i said illa swami mysore alli mane madu i said why should i have a house in mysore there is no need then he takes the trouble of identifying a land in mysore pushes us to buy the land in mysore and he says swami ivaga matte 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 ide tara maatadta irakagala nan enen instructions kodta idino beg bega mugisbidu 
I said, what is the hurry? Why are we in this mad rush for what? But the, little did we realize that the Lord was trying to usher in a certain kind of life for all of us. He was trying to tell us clearly, we didn't understand, that He is there always for us, but we will be bereft of that physical guidance probably. I feel I have had a few heart-to-heart -heart conversations with Swami about the students and their role. And I sincerely feel, I mean, every time he would talk about students' tears and the sense of pride and the sense of, you know, they being mine was always there. I feel the world is actually looking up to the students of Satya Sai. There is a great onerous responsibility on the students to lay the road ahead, to show the path, which has already been carved out by Swami. They, I think, have to get hugely involved in the mission from now. And I always will consider myself to be unfortunate to not have been a student of Bhagwan's university. But I feel I want to look up and follow the path that is going to be laid by the students. His students are the only hope for mankind. There is no other hope for mankind today other than the role which the students will play. A big initiative in this direction is already underway with the Vidyavahini program, but I am sure in the days, months and years to come, his students will rule the world. They will show the direction. Everybody will tame themselves and follow his students. There's a tremendous responsibility on the students. The feeling, because he has touched them, he is a part of them, directly. I don't think Swami ever spoke about my properties. The only property he said was his were his students. Finally, getting back to the topic which uh, Vidyadhar and other senior alumni gave me, I am there for you, is what he said. It is very painful. I keep asking, Swami, where are you? Now where are you? I want to see that form. I want to touch that form. I want to feel that form. I want to talk to that form. It's okay. Let people say you are physically getting attached to him. Doesn't matter. After all, such a beautiful avatar will not come again. It happened once. That will be the grandest, the most beautiful avatar that humanity has ever witnessed in, every, in any yuga. We miss him. Each one of us here misses him a lot. And the question comes, where are you, Swami, now? Why is it I'm not able to see you? But I'm steadily getting reconciled to a fact that if there is this intense craving from within, if there is that heart-to-heart -heart sort of a prayer, instantly he manifests himself. He doesn't, just as he would do when he was in that mortal coil, instantly he's there. In fact, I feel we should put our hands on our chest and say, not ask him, not say, Swami is saying, I am there for you. I think we need to ask ourselves, are we there for him? We need to be there for him to work through us. Our lives becomes his message. I think we need to raise up and we need, because so much love, so much care, so much of guidance, I don't think any avatar ever gave. It is time for us to pull up our socks, become one. All should be one. It should all be a united effort. And we should all have one common agenda to take forward Swami's love, Swami's message on service, on love, on compassion to the whole of humanity and make the whole of humanity into one large big Sai family. Jai Sairam.